Welcome to iPad Pros, the show all about professionals using the iPad to be productive and get work done. I'm Tim Chen, host of the show. One of the big questions I get asked following that Apple TV campaign with Esa Pekka Salonen was like, what, does he really just use Notion on iPad? Come on, that was just for the advert. And I'm going, well, look, we met the guy. And, <laughs> and at the time, he said he only uses Notion on iPad. He doesn't even use it on desktop, you know. So here's, here's like, you know, top composer, you know, resident of New York film, all this kind of stuff. And he's getting his ideas with Notion iPad. On today's episode, we have Chris from Personas, the makers of Notion for iOS, Mac, and Windows. Notion is the best app for composing, arranging, and creating sheet music on the iPad. Chris is the product manager and a composer himself. In today's interview, we discuss the process of writing music with Notion, the customer feedback loop for creating new features, the process of working with Apple on having their app featured in an ad, what features you get in the Mac version that haven't yet made it over to the iPad, tips for utilizing all the different input methods, which include handwriting recognition, MIDI keyboards, and touch to enter, and many more topics to help you understand what Notion is all about, and hopefully inspire some of you to start creating your own music. For those that don't know, I was a music composition major in college, and have spent hundreds of hours writing music with Finale Music on the Mac, and I'm very impressed with what Personas have done with this iPad app, and I'm pleased to say that once again I'm writing music thanks to this app. Just last weekend, my flight was delayed by several hours and was able to create this wonderful little piano piece while I was waiting for my plane to arrive. For those interested, it'll be at the very end of this episode if you'd like to take a listen. Without further ado, here's my interview with Chris from Personas. I'm here today with Chris Swaffer of Presonos, the makers of Notion. Welcome, Chris. Thanks very much, Tim. Thanks for having me. Excited to talk with you today. I'm a music composition major. That's my background back in college. Don't do much with that today, but it is always great to dive back in the music when I get a chance. And your app, Notion, your company's app, is pretty much the only solution out there for composers that I've seen that's pretty full-featured. Can you tell me a little bit about the background of Notion? Yeah, sure. Um Notion actually has its roots even back into the early 90s in a DOS program called Music Printer Plus. So as a as a notation program, it's got some history. And then it became Notion around about 2005 uh, on desktop first and was for Mac and Windows. And then 2010, we released the iPad version. And it was one of the first um, notation programs on the iPad. And just since then, it's just, you know, the amount of users we get and feedback has just been incredible. And that's sort of the story. We just saw the the opportunity that the iPad would give you on the move. And we thought, wow, we've, we've got to get in there. Yeah, and it's fantastic here there because there's some great features. The handwriting recognition we'll dive into later is sure. just mind-blowing. I, I've used Finale in the past. That's what I'd used in college. And nothing like that ever existed back then. And it's, it's been great. As your company develops the app, how do you listen to your users and plan out any features? What's great is that, well, there's a few things you can do uh, as a user. You can actually, you know, write a review in the App Store. Um, and Apple have actually finally given us, the developers, the chance to respond to those reviews as well to say, hey, thanks for the feedback. You know, we're working on it, you know, rather than just you sort of throwing it out there. Um, there is also a feedback button in the app itself on the home page. It's sort of, it's kind of tucked away at the bottom right hand corner of the home screen. Um, and that actually sends us a direct mail and behind the scenes it actually becomes a sort of a support ticket so we can track that request through our systems and the third way is we have this great answers forum on the presonus.com website where users can actually vote up or down other people's ideas and you can put your own ideas in so that's a really great great way of you know users coming together and actually voting on their most favorite requests so we kind of look over all those things and obviously we get direct emails in as well and you know all kinds of comments and forums so we sort of try and keep abreast of all those things sometimes it's pretty tricky responding to everything because there's just so many users out there but um but we look in all those places for those for those new features and we we take it all into account and how's the ios app link in to the mac and windows client and how does Maybe features carry over as you develop new features for Mac. Do some of those come down to iOS just as a gimme or how's how's that process like? Yeah, it sort of depends on how you're set up. I mean, my particular favorite workflow is um, using iCloud because everything I write, you know, whether it's on my phone or my iPad, will be syncing back at home on my Windows machine and on my Mac and my laptop as well. So it's great to have Notion on all those things and using something like iCloud or Dropbox to sync it all together is uh, is pretty cool. In terms of how features come down the 
the road. It kind of depends. There are some things on desktop that just don't lend themselves particularly well to sort of a touch surface and vice versa. Obviously, we developed the handwriting first on iPad before then putting it into uh, the desktop version because that totally makes sense for Windows tablets but doesn't make any sense at all for MacBook. So that it sort of depends which way around you look at it. Obviously, the, the iPad version is sort of a, a smaller version of the full version on desktop. You know, it's uh, if we took US, it's sort of 15 US dollars compared to 150 for the desktop version. So not everything gets in to the iPad version from the desktop version. But any scores or files you make in the desktop version can be totally opened up in the iPad version and vice versa. There's no difference in the file format. Anything you make on either platform is supported whichever way around you use it. Yeah. Now, handwriting recognition, was that a not a normal use case for adding new features through in-app purchase that I think some users, I'm, I'm very willing to pay money for new features like that. Is that something in the future that Personas would explore for some more advanced features, maybe being s- some extra in-app purchases that do that? Yeah, I mean, there's there's other things that we, we could add that we think, yeah, that, that's definitely worth an in-app purchase or there might be a licensing issue, which in which case we, we need to make an in-app purchase because you know that's just how the, the business model is behind the scenes. And there are some things we just think, absolutely not, we're not going to charge for that, working on some features that just should be in the iPad version. And, you know, we, and we don't charge for updates and things like that. So we sort of take it as a case-by-case basis. Yep, it's a fine balance for sure. Yeah, yeah. Now, can you tell me about what your role is there and kind of your background. Do you write music, uh, for instance? Sure. Well, I was a, a composition and conducting student studying in the UK in Manchester. And I sort of came to Notion via a number of other notation programs, as, as we all do, and was working for a number of other companies and just came across Notion and my own teaching composition for students. It was, just, it was a breath of fresh air. No longer was I teaching how to use the software i was actually teaching composition and it was it was just fantastic and just to see the response from the pupils was was really really strong so i came into it from a kind of teaching point of view notion also has a product called notion conducting which helps you how to learn how to conduct so i was actually using that again teaching teachers how to conduct so i I had all these things and i was sort of sending in notes to the company going hey have you guys thought about that and you know you should be careful what you wish for because a few years later you know, I end up in charge. So, (laughs) but that was sort of my sort of way into it. It came from that background. I still am, you know, active sort of arranging and conducting in the UK here, as well as um, looking after Notion too. Okay, wonderful. Now, what's been your role in Apple's, they had a big campaign that they featured your app in, as well as a really well-known classical composer, um, composer, right? Esa Pekka? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, Esther Pekka Salon, you know, he's he's probably our industry's, you know, closest thing to a rock star sort of composer, conductor. And yeah, Apple reached out in 2014 and said, OK, we need some things from you. We can't tell you what it's for yet. And so, you know, everything's shrouded in great secrecy, as Apple does. And out came this, you know, amazing campaign featuring uh, Esther Pekka, you know, composing with Notion on iPad in the backs of taxis and you know, whistling while he's shaving and coming up with tunes. And this advert, you know, went worldwide. It was shown, you know, during the Emmys and shown here in the middle of the Britain's Got Talent final. You know, this is Apple shining a light on contemporary classical music. So it was a really fantastic campaign, not just for us, because you don't see the word Notion anywhere, but it was great for all the music apps in the in the App Store. And for, for contemporary classical music, it was fantastic. And to go with that, they had this sort of micro site um, featuring him and his works. And also you would go into any Apple store and just see huge screenshots of Notion uh, in, in every single Apple shop in the whole world. Absolutely thrilling for us um, and, you know, really put Notion on the, on the map at that point. Yeah, I'd say so, for sure. Now... Let's go through a little bit of the app. Sure. Can you walk me through the process of composing on the iPad and what input and editing tools users should really get to know? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a few. So, I, you know, I don't want to sort of bore you and your listeners with the, all the many different input yeah. methods. But I think that the, the key point is that there are many sort of um, pathways in, you know, whether you're wanting to use the, you know, on-screen instruments, the on-screen piano, fretboard, uh, drum pad, or if you want to tap the notes on, um, this isn't handwriting recognition. You can just use your finger and tap the notes on once you've selected your duration. We really just wanted to make it as easy as possible to come to it from cold and just start getting some notes into the app. But there are yeah different, a few different ways of note input methods. And I guess handwriting gets the most pressed because it's the most exciting. But for me, you know, kind of old school, and maybe it's because that's how I was using Notion when it first came out, but I kind of use the, the on-screen piano and doodle around and, and think about how things should be. And then I hit the pencil button and then that's sort of step time input. And you could just put your 
pictures and durations in in that way. Certainly, I've been using handwriting recognition to then go back and do some editing, you know, adding accents and up bows and down bows. That's really been effective for my own personal workflow. But there's, yeah, there's many ways of getting your notes in. Now, what's your favorite part of the iPad app when you're using it? You know, I think for me, just the kind of what I was saying about just the fact it's cross-platform. For me, it's the workflow. You know, I, I can be at home on my desktop version and then go out on the train and someone rings me up, they need a part or transposed or something. I can pull out my iPhone and, you know, do that. And if I have more time, pull out my iPad. And just, just this sort of very modern way of working between devices is just my favorite thing to do and to talk about because it's kind of unique in a way you, you know just the, that very modern way of just being able to just pick up any old device whether it's a surface or an ipad and have my scores exactly where i left them so as a concept that's my favorite bit of the app but certainly as i'm if i'm demoing it one of the great things is sometimes just hitting play and let people hear the sounds that come with notion you know we took you know a fair few weeks at abbey road in london recording the London Symphony Orchestra for our own sample library. And over the years, we've optimized it and and, uh, and played with it and shrunk it into the iPad version. And, and people are just blown away, even from the iPad version of the sounds. I'm saying it's better than their current desktop software. What's that process like? Do you have to record different versions of every note to be you know, accented or staccato? It pretty much exactly that. So we go through every pitch and um, some of the sounds have up to seven different dynamic layers as well. And then articulations at each of those pitches and dynamic layers. So when you multiply that together, it's it's a lot of samples. And that's one of the key differences between desktop and iPad is that desktop has, you know, all those different depths of layers and sounds and levels. And in iPad, we kind of cheat and we sort of strip all those away to crowbar those sounds into into an iPad device. So when you do step up the desktop, you get a much sort of deeper and richer sound out of your compositions. But and is that because of the storage limitations up until now on iPads and iPhones? Yeah, and you know, so it used to be when it came out sort of one gigabyte, which if you were focusing on composition, that was okay to do. But you know, a lot of people have lots of stuff on their iPads, and that seemed a lot of space to take up by one app especially when you're looking at schools and they have many different apps for different subjects, you know, so we had to do something about that. So in the end, we actually put in a sound manager so you could decide how many sounds you have on the device. And when you don't need the sound, you just remove the sound and it plays back with a default piano sound instead. So on my iPad Pro, I've got pretty much all the sounds. It takes up a couple of gigs because that's all the expansion sounds as well that I've got on there. Um, But I've got the space on my iPad Pro to do that. Yeah, I've got a 512 gigabyte, so I can (laughs) download all the sounds. you, You can put all your sounds in there but you know uh, my old iphone i think it's about an eight gig iphone 5 i need to have room for my funny cat videos and photos and stuff oh yeah and they made 32 gigabyte ipad pros for a while and yeah that was a struggle for sure yeah yeah. oh now there's some purchases of sounds as well what comes included and what do you need to spend a little bit more to get access to yeah sure you get with the default purchase so with your 15 us dollars you get the app and you get pretty much a standard orchestra it's guitar bass drums piano and there's some free unlockable instruments when you register with presonus as well and that's your alto tenor barry saxes glock and solo strings so we pretty much out the box you've got you know all those orchestral instruments and your kind of rock instruments as well um, to just get going with the expansion sounds are sort of either groups of like section instruments so when you have samples of two or more instruments playing together Mm-hmm. Um, like you know flute duo or something like that or there are auxiliary instruments like bass flute or um, contrabass sax and there's some sound effects and then there's some specific jazz samples as well that contain all the sort of flutters and falls and all that kind of stuff um, so they're sort of more auxiliary sounds and so if you're into those things then you would go and buy either those individual sounds or there's smaller bundles so you can buy the jazz bundle or or you can buy the all bundle um, to get all those sure. extra sounds all together okay th- th- i think the key thing is is that the app itself does come bundled um, out the box with a full orchestra and you know your guitars bass rhythms that yeah kind the of sounds stuff. are great one thing i noticed is i was playing around just to see how many staffs i can get in there and so far, I haven't, haven't found a limit. Is there a limit how many instruments you can put in a score? No, there's there's no limit on how many instruments you can uh, write for. And now on the playback, um, we do pop up this warning, which is really sort of a hangover from older devices. There is no limit on the amount of sounds that Notion will play back either. But there is kind of a limit on your own iPad's capabilities of playing multiple samples at once. Okay, so like on a second gen iPad Pro, it could play more than 14 sounds? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yeah, 
it's just a guide really you know and it's difficult to sort of differentiate yeah. what device is being used on because you could be playing on an ipad 2 right now and that might kind of start creaking after a sort of 20 odd sounds but with an ipad pro you know you you'll be uh you'll be playing very large scores no problem oh great yeah because i saw that warning wasn't sure if that would scale up i think what we will do with that warning is it will, we'll, we'll stop that warning from popping up quite so often because that gets super annoying yeah for sure now, what's the best process for polishing up your score? There's, I know there's the green, I think it's the playhead that kind of moves you through, and then there's the selection tool. What's the best process for selecting things and adding dynamics and articulations? Personally, I sort of tend to add articulations and things as I go. That's just a, just a habit. And certainly when I was teaching composition, I was trying to encourage students to think about the sound the instrument wake and how it would make it and how loud it would be before actually putting the note on the page. Yeah, I got yelled at um, for doing all this after the fact. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, when you, you see sort of, uh, when I was teaching you, you know, the, the kids would spit out the parts and whatever from the printer with using other notation software. And, you'd, you know, they'd be devoid of any articulation or dynamics or whatever. And they think, I finished you think oh no you haven't you know we have to go back around and, and actually one that's one great thing about notion sounds is that it kind of rewards you from editing it you know because you you know you write a flutter tongue or a dynamic or a, a specific articulation and you can really hear the change in sound so it really encourages you to go back and do this um fine tuning so i sort of tend to do it as i go once you've finished putting some notes and if you want to go back and do something if you just double tap the measure it's on then you can add for example you know staccati to every single note and in that selection or you can add a hairpin under the whole of that selection you know or individual notes or clear all the articulations in a given selection so you don't have to do everything you know per note okay so double tapping will select an entire measure and then you can use the handles to go in and out exactly that from there okay using the handwriting recognition do you have any tips for getting the most out of it it's been pretty accurate for me but any tips for getting it even better yeah. I mean, you know, when I go and do shows and demos, you know, people say, let me have a go. And they try and they write, write the craziest, most complicated thing ever. And, you know, it's it's horrific. It just doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't do it. It's kind of like, um, you know, when you sort of have people using MIDI recording, you know, and they play a blistering solo full of like 64th notes and they wonder why it doesn't come up exactly as they played it, you know. Yeah, unless you're Yo-Yo Ma for the piano yeah. and getting everything exactly right, you're not going to... MIDI. it's not going to work no. you know you better use better use some other way of note input and i think that goes for handwriting as well you know if you have something more intricate then the great thing about notion is that handwriting is not the only way of putting notes in unlike other software you know there's you can use your step time you know you can tap notes in select the rhythm ahead of time however you want to do it there might be a better way of doing it but for handwriting itself the first thing i would say is go and have a look under um settings handwriting about to see actually what elements we do support because we don't support everything yeah i tried crescendos and i noticed oh wait that's not supported yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah so i would definitely say that's the first thing just go and look what we do actually support first and then really just just go and play with it i mean there's no learning process to go through because the the way in which it's been done is it's already been taught thousands of different versions of you know a quarter note rest or, or whatever it's already has that built in so you don't need to go through a learning process that you might do with other handwriting software and then there's these two modes of handwriting as well so you can actually write directly into the score and into as many staves and systems as you want to or if you want to use more perhaps fine sort of tuning you can pull up the handwriting zoom area and that will then focus in on the one staff that you've touched on and that's great especially if you have a big score you don't have to keep zooming in and zooming out uh, to see what you're doing you can just touch in the score where you want to write and then the zoom area will correspond to it now i actually use that zoom area for kind of dual mode entry if you like so on the sort of score area above i can use step time or touch input or midi input to put my notes and rhythms in but with the handwriting area open at the bottom of the screen I can then use that to add my articulations, my art bows, down bows, accents, staccato, that kind of stuff. So for me, it's given me a sort of a dual mode entry method, which has been pretty cool. Very nice. The quick access palette, how does that work? Is there, does it learn what you use most or is it just general for what most people would need access to the most often? Yeah, right now it's fixed and we sort of chose what went in there um, because we can see from various analytics what people use the most on the back end of the software. So we kind of chucked in there the, the things that people are generally going to use the most. But further down the line, we're going to be able to customize all of those palettes. You can just sort of reorder them around and drag in and drag off icons, that kind of stuff. But that's a bit further down the line for us. Is that something 
that iOS 11 is kind of opening up for you with their new API or is that unrelated? Uh, it, it's unrelated. We could have done this earlier. We just haven't got um, to it yet. But that certainly gives us some more possibilities for sure. Yeah, that'll be very nice because every person thinks a little bit differently. So it, it helps. Yeah, exactly. I mean, a notion up to, up to this point and both on desktop is it's been great about just doing some things for you, you know, really making it easy, you know, tearing away the barriers for people to get into notation software. But we're at a point now where, you know, we really need to sort of think about those customizable things. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff that may be tucked in menus even on the iPad version, I'd like to bring a bit further forward so it's not quite so hidden and then allow the user to sort of focus on what they want to themselves um, and, and customize the app. That's certainly on our minds. Now, the selection palette, there's that more button. And I chose that last night and was amazed with all the things that is hidden away in there. What Can you, walk, can you tell me about some of the stuff that, that's available through that? <laughs> yeah, and that's exactly what I was thinking of just then, thinking about the stuff that's sort of a bit hidden. But certainly when you uh, make a selection and then uh, go to more, you've got all kinds of tools under there, including, you know, can transpose everything in a given selection. You can clear special, which means you can clear dynamics or you can just clear articulations. You can swap voices around, which is really useful, especially if you've like put in some drum parts or something the wrong way around and you realize your stems are going the wrong way. You can just get in there and swap the voices around. If you've recorded something in with your MIDI keyboard and your velocities are pretty, you know, heavy, you can actually go in and clear those velocities away um, from a given selection. And some layout things as well. You can sh show and hide resting staves as well, so you don't have to just print out, you know, tons of paper um, if there's a lot of instruments with bars rest. And, you know, there's ways of forcing the next system or the next measure onto the next page or the next line. Um, so there's a few sort of blunt layout tools you can do in that menu as well. But yeah, definitely. So the double tap going to more um, opens up a, a features there. Excellent. You mentioned rests and multi-measure rests. So for part export, when you're printing out parts, does that automatically put in multi-measure rests? You need to select that. If you go to part settings and then multi-measure rests, you can select what the minimum mm -hmm. number of rests should be before it forms a multi-measure rest. Okay. And then uh, when you export the parts, it will it will put those in. I think one thing to say is that we get quite a lot of tech support issues is when the full score only has one instrument um, and you sort of confuse looking at the full score with looking at the actual instrument part itself. That's something I'll do when I'm just writing a piano uh, part. I'll, I'll do that sometimes. Yeah, exactly. So you can't do multi-measure rests in a full score. So you think, I can't do multi-measure rests. What's going on? <laughs> but if you go into the actual part, even though there's only one instrument in the score, then you'll see you can do multi-measure rests. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. For entering lyrics, I don't do it a ton, but I saw a couple different modes for that. What are the different options there? Is that where it's versus one, two, three, four? Yeah, there's like eight, four, and... Yeah, so lyrics, one, two, three, four, is basically just the verse number. So you can write up to four verses in the iPad version. That then just puts the each verse underneath a line of text. So you can have like four lines stacked vertically underneath each other for lyrics um, for the same music above. Oh, very nice. Okay, so that's that's all the numbers, just what the verse is. Okay, exactly that. The lyrics um, are quite nice. You can you can use hyphens and underscores to actually put in syllables and extender lines at the end of words and things. Um, even on the iPad version, on desktop you can write up to nine verses, and you can copy and paste lyrics from an external source like you know word or something like that you can actually paste them directly in on, on the, the desktop version so that's a good example of something to, that we would bring over to ipad okay that that would be very nice ios uh, 11 you can even probably drag some text into the app if yeah that would be very nice i'll just make a note of that thank you <laughs> <laughs> now with the mini keyboards i've got a, a usb one but i saw your app supports bluetooth mini keyboards those are taking off, I guess. What's the good models to recommend there? Sure. You know, we, we had some users telling us about, you know, for a while now, things like Puck, which and the, the MI.1, which were ways of turning any instrument into a Bluetooth MIDI instrument. And then... Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, that, that, that's really good. So you can just, if you've got MIDI out, you can then attach these little things into the back. And then Jamstick, which is like a little sawn-off um, guitar fretboard, used to be only Wi-Fi, but is now a Bluetooth instrument. So you can use that wirelessly um, so you can actually have a guitar connected wirelessly to Notion and be doing that. And there's also Triple Play by Fishman, which is actually a pickup, a MIDI pickup for your normal guitar, which just sits on the guitar and actually turns out MIDI and can connect to Notion in that way as well. So there's a few things there. The one thing that has been going really well the last couple of years has been the X-Key Air um, by CME. Everyone looks at it, thinks it's like an Apple product. It really looks like a, this is the same sort of 
silver metal as the MacBook Pro. And they're fantastic little 25 key, really flat bed keyboard that you can connect wirelessly via Bluetooth directly into Notion. And that's, that's just been fantastic for traveling around with. Yeah, I remember in college, my go-to kit was uh, my MacBook Pro. I had this octave and a half USB keyboard. And then um, I actually traveled with an external keyboard as well, Bluetooth. So I'd have my right hand to the right of me, the, the MIDI, and then to the my left hand. And I'd have the external with the big number pad that I could hot swap between different note durations and rests. And then the middle, I had you know the laptop with uh, the regular keyboard there. Yeah, yeah. Now you can save a few kilograms in your backpack. Right. Just an iPad Pro and a, a tiny little wireless keyboard. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, they'll be, they'll be nice. Yeah, I'll have to try that. Uh, most of the time I'm in the apartment when I write. What fat power features do you think most people don't realize are in your app that you kind of wish they, they knew about? <laughs> <laughs> um, some of the actual Apple features might be worth sort of flagging up at sure. this point. I mean, you know, especially as we're talking iPad Pro, you know, not many people realize, for example, you can do split view with Notion. So you can actually sort of drag another app from the side in so you can actually see two different apps at once. Uh, on the same screen so you can have notion on one side and you know maybe your favorite you know pdf annotator so you can export from notion directly to the app on the same ipad as pdf yeah you could even if you're writing a song maybe there's a songwriting app where you're looking at lyrics and toying around there maybe that could be something yeah exactly um you have a little lead sheet or something you've dug up a pdf for and you can just be you know writing directly from it or maybe you're arranging and bored and you're reading cosmopolitan magazine or something you know you, you've, <laughs> right. you've got it yeah um, but that's yeah split view is cool and also we do slide over so that means that's that's the sort of the sort of the even thinner version of notion and it's kind of cool because notion ipad becomes like notion iphone so it just it sort of sits in this very thin corner on the right hand side so you don't have to have the screen um half and half so there's a, f- yeah, there's a few apple things that we that we do there we've just dropped in a new widget which means from the lock screen or the notification screen you can now just go new score and it'll pop notion open and just set up a, a brand new default score uh, it also gives you a list of your your most recent files so that just saves you a bit of time you know unlocking the ipad and opening up notion and then select a new score we've got a new widget uh, available. So yeah, so there's a couple of things in that. I'd certainly flag up the new exporting features that happened in maybe the last version, but one mm-hmm. where you can export from Notion, you know, PDF, WAV file, whatever, but to other apps on the device without having to take it out to Dropbox or bring it back in or to iTunes or something. Oh, nice. So you can go right to the four score music, you know, reader app. Yeah. Exactly that. Yeah, yeah. So if you're exporting as music XML, the iPad will know which apps on your device also support that file format and then pop them up there and you can show your files that way. Also, that same export window has got AirDrop in as well. So I've been going to some schools where they're actually the pupils are sharing their Notion scores with their teacher device or the teacher MacBook. I'm using AirDrop via a Bluetooth connection, which is especially great. You know, the network's not particularly good in a certain classroom or something. Yeah, and that opened it up to save to the files app in iOS 11 too, so you can organize it within the main... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, file repository there. Yeah. I haven't played around with the Mac or Windows versions. What kind of features do you get by going to those platforms that aren't in iOS yet? Well, there's quite a few. Um, I suppose the top ones would be you can use Notion on desktop versions as a live performance instrument. And and this is where sort of Notion came from originally is to be able to put the notes in and print them out. Sure, it's a notation program, but also then to take that laptop or whatever on stage and use it you know, live in your school pit band or adding strings to a rock band or something you know you have these live controls for actually triggering the tempo and also the velocity of your score in real time so you have this live performance capability in mac and pc that you don't get on the ipad oh that's interesting so there is a way to almost tapping the beat as it's changing or what's the it's exactly that you're tapping the beat so by default you're tapping what the time signature is so maybe you're tapping four beats in a bar four quarter notes in a bar and that's your default if you're tapping an external midi keyboard because it's touch sensitive the harder you tap the louder and softer the score gets relatively so you have some control over that and then each key around what's two octaves around middle c does something slightly different so you can actually vamp in real time you can fade in fade out you can navigate between rehearsal marks you can stop that's pretty crucial one and you can cruise if you don't want to tap your way through an entire show. So there's all these facilities for actually using Notion as a live performance surface and 
Uh, Notion actually comes with a score library of about 200 scores. Again, that's something you don't get in the iPad version and for you to sort of explore and, and play around with and uh, all kinds of things. So that, that's one big, big difference. Okay, excellent. I would say the, I mean, there's probably a long list of things, but the other things is you, there's a layout control layer in Notion for desktop, which means you can, you know, drag staves and systems and elements exactly around, you know, dragging the width of measures, that kind of thing that you can't do on iPads. So you have much more control over how the score looks. And those looks, are those carried over to iOS if you did some looks there? Exactly that. Will, okay. Yeah, yeah. So if you, yeah, if you dragged around your measure, you know, custom width spaces or whatever, whatever you've done, when you send it over to iPad is exactly as you made it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it doesn't reformat anything. But yeah, on the desktop, we also have a really cool integration now with Studio One, which is our kind of sister software at PreSonus, which is the DAW, a sequencing program for recording and, you know, virtual instruments, whatever. And now you can have a project in Studio One and you can send note data or uh, audio even across to Notion. And you can edit in Notion and send it back to the original Studio One document and you keep going, you know, between the two bits of software side by side. And you have this very cool workflow between a DAW and notation software. Excellent. Now, is the development schedule of the iOS app, is it, do you guys try to hit, uh, you know, one big release a year? What's the typical release schedule for the iOS version? I'd love it if we had a typical release <laughs> schedule. But I think if anyone's listening that uses Notion, they'll know that there's no such thing as a typical release schedule. We kind of work between iOS and desktop. I mean, so obviously, a great big chunk of the code is the same for both. But we do have to obviously do things slightly differently for iOS than what we do for the desktop versions. Um, so we sort of flip between the two things and occasionally we'll be able to work um, in parallel side by side on both platforms. But we tend to sort of develop top down from the desktop version to the iPad version. So if there hasn't been an update for iOS for a while, it means that we've been working on desktop and vice versa. And so, yes, I'd love to be able to give you a typical release, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that makes yeah. Yeah, developers takes as long as it needs to take, yeah, to do, do, do new features. Yeah, and we know that when we do a big release for iOS, we know because there are so many different devices now on iOS with so many different processes and so many potentials for different kinds of bugs and different OS numbers, you know, there's there's all kinds of room for little things getting through the net as well. So we know that we'll, with a big version, there'll be a sub subsequent sort of bug fix and, and all that kind of stuff as well. So we try to sort of keep it going, but we know there's some big gaps in between our releases as we work on other things. Yeah. Now, with an iPhone version out there, so is the only difference between iPhone and iPad just interface and not having as much room to put stuff on a screen on the iPhone? Pretty much. And it's a universal app as well. So if, you, if you've bought the iPad version, you have the iPhone version. It's, you know, you, you have it. It's not an extra purchase. The differences are, yes, in the layout. There's not quite as much room to put things in. So we have a sort of sliding toolbar that comes in from the left to sort of save space on the actual home screen. And we didn't add handwriting recognition into the iPhone version because at the time of doing it, you know, we weren't up to sort of the six pluses and seven pluses screen sizes. So it really just didn't make sense to be sort of trying to scribble into a tiny phone screen yeah. for handwriting. But, you know, we... No, no Apple Pencil for... Yeah, no yet. Apple Pencil either. <laughs> I mean, you know, as much as you don't need the Apple Pencil, you can even just use your finger. It's really nice. Um, <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, it's super nice. So it kind of didn't make sense to do it on the phone. But other than that, you know, it's the same app underneath. Okay. And do you see in the future, like five years from now, will music students be using this and not even maybe need to get a Mac to write music? Is this kind of a potential future for some music students? Yeah, I mean, th there's a few things. I mean, ultimately, the the way that the and the, the recent, most recent iPad Pros that have come out, I mean, they're, they're so powerful now. And so the gap between what an iPad Pro can do and, you know, other computers I mean, is definitely narrowing. What's happening sort of, you know, if we talk about education, for example, you know, what's happening right now is that many people are bringing all their own devices to school and just using what they've got. So it may be that they might not have an iPad, but they might have a tablet or a Windows tablet or a Surface or even, you know, other things that we don't support as yet. You know, Chromebooks, Android, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. And, you know, all, all we can really do is sort of support the best we can. It's hard to know where it's going to go. But certainly there are schools I'm going into and all they're using is is iPad for notation because that's that's all they need and they get everything they can. And in fact, you know, one of the big questions I get asked following that Apple TV campaign with Esapekka Salonen was like, well, does he really just use Notion on iPad? Come on, that was just for the advert. And I'm going, well, look, we met the guy. And, <laughs> and at the time he said he only uses Notion on iPad. He doesn't even use it on desktop, you know. So here's, here's like, you know, top composer, you know, resident in the New York film, this kind of stuff. And he's getting his ideas with Notion iPad, you know, so. Do you think he 
go start finishing. I've had or does he do ideas here and is he like an old school handwriter and will do a handwritten score as his final product? I think when you're that famous you you definitely have a publisher and a copyist that's that's putting your own stuff in and I'm sure that you know they're not using Notion for actually um, doing the, the published engraving absolutely you know um, that's not really what Notion's kind of about but for him that's all he uses yeah you know, he gets his ideas down and it's formatted well enough um, and then he can send that off there's no barrier to the the creative workflow which is what we are all about excellent well thank you so much chris for your time today is there anything else you want to mention before uh we wrap it up here no not not at all i mean i'm just really pleased to come on and and uh, talk about this i mean the, the ipad pro has uh, sort of opened up what we can do in notion and you know the advent of the apple pencil as well has just been fantastic you know just the, the accuracy with the handwriting recognition and you know being able to you know press harder with the apple pencil against the screen and, and get a thicker line you know it's really really like drawing now and i've been going into a few schools and just seeing how pupils are actually responding to drawing in with these thickness of lines and really thinking about how the pen hits the page and thinking about what they're notating which is kind of bringing us back full circle to uh, how it was originally so it's 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 really an exciting time and the ipad pro and the pencil is certainly uh, helping us get there yeah it is for sure and i'm not sure if you've seen it on the second generation ipad pro but the pencil is even that much better it, it really feels like just writing in glass at this point yeah it's, they've done a stunning job with it well for people that want more information about notion and the rest of your products where can people go well i'd send them over to um, presonus.com for starters that's our, our parent company and you can see all of our software there and we also make other ipad apps as well for you know re- remote controlling your mixer and your and for studio one there's all kinds of stuff over there to have a look at and um, we make mixers and speakers and pa and you know just just a whole bunch of goodies so yeah presonus.com and there's some cool resources for notion there not just you know sort of obligatory you know youtube channels and things but we also have a dedicated website if you're teaching music ed.presonus.com but if you're sort of at home wondering where to start actually hal leonard have printed a book making music with notion which is a fantastic book of getting started with notion on both desktop and ipad and the author of that book george hess has also done a groove 3 video training series as well both worth checking out very cool yeah i will have to look into that because i I definitely want to get back into writing music and i believe this is a good app to do just that well thank you so much chris for your time today it's been wonderful no problem thanks for having me tim thanks for listening to this episode of ipad pros you can find more information about notion at notionmusic.com that's n-o-t-i-o-n music.com you can find the show notes over at ipadpros.net Most of the show notes include screencasts, what I call video extras. They gave you a look at whatever app or workflow was discussed that episode. You'll find these extras, if an episode has them, in the show notes over at iPadPros.net. If you like the show, please review it in iTunes and pass along to a friend. Reviews in iTunes are really critical and I'd really appreciate it. If you have any feedback or any questions, please send those to iPadProsPodcast at gmail.com. If you have an interesting workflow or use case of the iPad, please get in touch with me. I'd love to hear about it. You can follow the show on Twitter at iPad Pros Podcast, and you can follow me personally on Twitter at T-C-H-A-T-E-N. Thanks for listening to this episode of iPad Pros. Now, here's the piano piece I promised you at the beginning of the episode. Enjoy. Enjoy.